The Bonneville Shoreline Trail has been under construction for 30 years. Join me, Brandon Plew, and my son Spencer as we hike the 200 mile length of the BST to learn about its past, present, and future, and explore the landscape of this boundary between the city and the wilderness. Well, we're gonna pick up the trail here again on the flanks of Mount Olympus. We had to kind of walk through this subdivision to get here, which doesn't seem right, but I guess it's the only way to do this. I'm not as familiar with this section of the trail, so I figured I should have somebody guide us who probably knows this trail here better than anybody else. John Knobloch. Hi, John. How you doing? Brandon. John is the is the chair of the Bonneville Shoreline Trail Committee, so you're kind of the boss of this whole thing, right? Well, I wouldn't say I'm the boss, but I'm the main cheerleader. The cheerleader, yes. Well, you do very well at the cheerleading <laughs> stuff, so why don't we hit uh, the trail thanks. here? So we have to actually, they actually have permission to go through this guy's yard here, huh? Yeah, right up the driveway. All right, let's go. This trail really was kind of crappy and with more use has gotten better. Well, when we put in the Bonneville Shoreline Trail up above here and widened out the trail, we actually used that old piece of water line for the retaining and putting a bunch of gravel through here to make a smoother trail bed, but it kind of dipped down still. So I believe last year, the Cottonwood Canyons Foundation working for the Forest Service then came back in and built this nice retaining wall. So okay. they've leveled out the tread. It's really nice. Good to have lots of friends on the, for the trail. It, there, it is good to have lots of folks all working together. Good. This is a beautiful little creek up here. Does this, does this flow year-round? It's great. Yes, it flows year-round. It's, of course, springtime now, and so the water is gushing. Yeah. But even in the late fall, this will still have water coming down it. So it's great. It makes this little Hughes Canyon Trail really attractive for folks with dogs. And it stays cool down here. When you're down in the valley, it looks hot and dry. You would never suspect that there's this little oasis up here. I'm amazed at how many of these canyons, you don't notice it when you're you know, from below, because there's no water flowing down in the valley. And you come up in the canyon, and there's a really nice creek up there. So yeah, that's it makes, right. makes these trails really nice. That's quite a view out there. Yeah, you have a great view of the copper mine. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. Eventually, Try careful the there. <laughs> Eventually, the trail is going to cross the Hughes Canyon Trail and then go up above these cliffs above us. And it'll stay above those rock knolls, just above those Engelmann spruce up there, and then loop around to eventually go over the old gravel pit and connect into Big Cottonwood Canyon Road. Good things take time. Sometimes these, <laughs> yeah. be well, another we decade will slide Could be. through our fingers. <laughs> Try and get out of here safely. This alignment here up on the flank of Mount Olympus here is fairly recent. When was this built, this, this segment we're walking on now? So this was built uh, over the course of three years and it was completed uh, Three years ago, I believe. Three years ago. Okay. Was it when it was first opened up. So yeah, this is some amazing terrain through here. It, it was is. pretty impressive that the trail could get built through here. The goal was to try to keep moving forward with the Bonneville Shoreline Trail because that's part of the forest plan. And so it was on their priority. And the county had, Salt Lake County had a 2005 Bonneville Shoreline Trail plan that showed trail going across here in some form. That made that made this a relatively easy one to approve then. Yes. You would you would think. <laughs> but then it's all it's all a little tricky because this goes in and out of the wilderness area. So, so it had to be all hand built because okay. of course you can't use machinery to build within wilderness areas. Uh -huh. And as it turns out this upper alignment is really beautiful. If you look back behind us up Hughes Canyon. It's just amazing scenery up it, here. Yeah, this is just gorgeous up here. Just have to, just have to climb up to it. But. Yes, exactly. So we would 
go across there and climb up a little bit and stay above the cliff band. Right. So that if they built homes down there, even though up above the cliff band is his private property, we it's could get across there. there without being in the backyards yeah. and have the uh, developer be happy with that alignment. And I've talked to him about that and he's begrudgingly okay with that. <laughs> I'm impressed with how you're able to kind of keep connections with like so many different people that are, you know, landowners and stuff. It's it's a lot of lot of balls to juggle. I mean, that's uh, what we're trying to do in Utah County and you're way ahead of us. And You have to kind of put yourself out there to cold call these folks. Yeah. And say, hey, I'm John with the Bonneville Shoreline Trail Committee and we're planning for years off into the future and I wanted to talk to you about your land a little bit. And I know you own this private property. What's your intent? And do you think there's any room for us to build the trail there eventually? So I have to kind of connect with them on a personal level. Yeah, so there's one other thing you need to see along here. Oh, Brandon. Okay. And up on the side of here is a memorial plaque to Brett Smith. He died recently, uh, a couple of years back, of Parkinson's disease. He was the same age as me. A little That's touching. Hard. It was a little touching when he passed. So is this kind of his last thing? Was getting this section of trail? This, this was, and Ready? Brett Brett worked really hard along with the Forest Service to figure out the alignment to make this section of the trail happen. Was he able to see it done, or he, he was? In fact, I saw him. We were doing a volunteer day working on here, and Brett came up and helped a little bit just several weeks before he died. That's amazing. It was amazing. He he was a force of nature. That's he great. really wanted to see this happen. It's uh, as as we kind of move into a second or third generation of people working on this trail, it's it's uh, nice to remember the people that got it going and worked so hard on the beginning. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. Oh, we're entering the Mount Olympus wilderness now. Yes. So the restrictions all change now. We're not supposed to have bikes here, right? Exactly. No mechanized equipment in the wilderness area. So why were they okay with, with actually building the trail originally with, with that restriction? Well, there was just a realization that there might be sections of the Bonneville Shoreline Trail that are appropriate for mixed use. In some areas, it would be hiking only, hiking and running. The intent of building the Bonneville Shoreline Trail was to make it uh, a shared use for as much of it as possible. But you, you know, you just have to go with the reality of what you have on the ground. But the IMBA folks, International Mountain Bike Association, has got a bill put into Congress along with Representative John Curtis and Senator Mitt Romney to actually move the wilderness boundary just above the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. Roughly 400 acres of wilderness would be removed here and it would be added up in Mill Creek Canyon where there's a section that was used to be owned by the Boy Scouts that sold it to the Forest Service and three sides of that is all wilderness, so it would be appropriate, and it's a beautiful canyon, green mm -hmm, canyon, mm -hmm. that would become wilderness. So it's an even trade as far as you have acres of wilderness land. Exactly. Of course, some of the environmental groups, such as the Wilderness Society and Save Our Canyons, are still opposed to that bill because they would like to see a greater, larger Central Wasatch National Conservation Recreation Area established which would also, in that action, add 8,000 acres of additional wilderness. There is a bit of a fight here, but I guess this this uh, bill just got reported out of committee, so there's a chance that it it's might pass? slowly but surely might. moving forward, and it might pass. Well, let's see. It, it seems like it's a good compromise uh, in this situation to try to, to get that done, so yeah, I, let's I think hope for makes, the best. I think it makes sense. Wow, this must have taken some work. Oh, There's yeah. There's a lot of rock up here. Yeah, there was, and, right, because you can't use, uh, you know, if this had been built by mechanized equipment, instead of taking, I believe really this took four years of hand labor to put this section of trail in. 
a lot of time and effort by the Forest Service and Cottonwood Canyons Foundation and volunteer crew days that the Bonneville Shoreline Trail Committee put on. If you had been able to do this with a, hy a hydraulic jackhammer on a mini excavator, you could just cut through this and make a beautiful bench cut and it would be gorgeous. But when you're trying to do it with a sledgehammer, <laughs> I, I personally broke through some of these and where you would just take a sledgehammer and you'd hit it and 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 then you'd start to see a little hairline crack form <laughs> and you'd keep hitting it and then you change direction and you see another crack form and you hit it and you spend better part of an hour hitting this to break off a little section about six inches thick. <laughs> and, and when you're in bed that night, you could feel your arms vibrating oh, yeah, still. Yeah. <laughs> So John, I consider you kind of the second generation of BST builders. Uh, how did you get started? What's your story with the, with the Bonneville Shoreline Trail? Well, I moved into Salt Lake in 1998 and we used to hike up in the hillside above there and we saw a bulldozer up there building a section of trail. I've always been a big trail advocate and so I asked what was going on and they said they're building the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. Soon thereafter, I moved to the neighborhood right below Granger Peak. I had talked to some neighbors about the Bonneville Shoreline Trail coming across down there someday. And so we, working with uh, Jim Byrne and Rick Reese, developed a neighborhood uh, advocacy group to try to push for getting the Bonneville Shoreline Trail built there. Okay. So that this was- the Southeast corner of Salt Lake City. Yes. Yeah, so it was actually Mill so, Creek. Yep, right in Mill Creek, uh, just south of I-80. So I worked for a couple of years trying to get the Bonneville Shoreline Trail built there, uh, really trying to get community support, of which we held several meetings, and generally 90% of the people were in favor of getting the trail built. Of course, there was always a handful of folks that were the, the NIMBYs or had concerns over wildlife or people being too close to their homes. That was going nowhere due to private property. But then I moved over into Olympus Cove area when the trail along Mount Olympus was just getting built. But we're on now. Which we're on now. And so I got further involved with uh, coordinating volunteer days and helping people uh, get this built. That's when I, I guess, formally got invited to be on the Bonneville Shoreline Trail Committee. One of those things when you are around for long enough and other people to start to move on, like Rick Reese had moved, and then Jim Byrne was ready to retire from trail building, and Brett Smith died. Dave Roth, who had been co-chair, got transferred to California with his job. So that's when Jim asked me if I would take on the uh, the chair role to keep things moving along for the Bonneville Shoreline Trail Committee. No, no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> Does not, you know. It does not pay to be responsible. You, you end up being in charge of things. <laughs> but hey, somebody needs to do it. And so uh, I have the, the energy and the time and the passion for trying to get the Bonneville Shoreline Trail completed. So it's clear that over the years, the energy and the, the work on the Bonneville Shoreline Trail has kind of ebbed and flowed. What's been your experience with trying to keep the thing actually running and a going concern of trying to finish this thing? Well, I think one of the biggest impediments that people were running into was the easy parts got built. Yeah, <laughs> we did all the easy parts. <laughs> and then the hard parts came where there's private property or wilderness areas or- Really steep slopes. Uh, steep slopes and it got more difficult. As it was originally envisioned, the committee, the BST committee, is more of a citizen organization to like an advocacy for the for the trail. There was a coalition or something that was the actual stakeholders in the cities and the counties and stuff to actually build it. Yes, exactly. It can be tricky for those government agencies to push and push and push and try to make anything happen. So now we are trying to get a little renewed energy and get more folks involved from different segments of the trail because originally it was just Salt Lake County people yeah. where the trail started. But 
you know, through the years, there was less housing built onto the bench of Lake Bonneville. Some of those areas already had user created trails and it was kind of easy to convert those and make it into official Bonneville shoreline trail. Yeah, like we had a lot of that in Utah County. There, there aren't great trails, some of it, but it's, it was there. But trail standards have also improved. You know, folks expect to have a nicer Bonneville shoreline trail than just right. a deer trail that happens to be on the bench. Right, right. So a lot of effort's gone into actually trying to improve the trail and make it more user friendly along the way. Your vision then, it sounds like, is to kind of rebuild the committee, the citizen group, with people from all over, and also kind of rebuild the coalition as well. Yes, and get a little more energy going on that, because the coalition, which was city and county representatives, a lot of them, with like their parks and rec departments, for the actual Bonneville Shoreline Trail Committee, if we can have at least a citizen member from each of the counties, those folks can help encourage the trail development and find out you know, where are the impediments and then we can work together as a team to try to you know, overcome some of those hurdles that might be out there that's prevented the trail from being developed. This doesn't exactly strike me as a fun mountain biking trail, so this section. No, it's so really rough in places. Yes, there are there are some rough places. Uh, but well, I guess that's a good change from some of the really groomed trails. Yes, exactly. And I've certainly I've seen tracks of mountain bikes on here before. So there are a few uh, hardy souls that have made it across here illegally. But if it is also one of those things where the trail was built to you know the general width is yeah, just about bikeable it's really a three foot design width right but if the build does pass and especially uh, right now of course the trail doesn't go anywhere other than to the hughes canyon trail which is not suitable for bikes right but when the trail gets built all the way to big cottonwood canyon road all of a sudden you have a long stretch where it would be more attractive for mountain bikes. Uh huh. So then we could get out here and cut one more foot back, right. you know, and, and break apart a few more of those rock areas, yeah. and, and and actually smooth it out so that it's a little more uh, bike friendly. Heroic explorer pose. <laughs> it's a beautiful spot here because you can see all the way into the ridge of Little Cottonwood Canyon with the snow-covered mountains and here it's warm and sunny and beautiful and yeah. views across to the ochres. Oh. Okay, let me get off this cliff. <laughs> Which way do we go? We go up. Up. So we've left the wilderness and we've crossed the the trail to the top of Mount Olympus now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is a this is an older section of trail. When was when was this built? Because you were involved with this to some degree, weren't you? Yeah, this this section of trail was built after the uh, Forest Service did their 2010 environmental assessment on building trail all the way through Salt Lake County. Okay. So basically from I-80 to the south, and as as part of that, this this was one of the first significant sections to get started after that was done. It was built old school by all by hand again. And so I was involved in helping get the Mount Olympus Community Council to approve, or at least to not oppose getting the trail built across here because there were some folks on the community council that weren't supportive. But we got through that hurdle and then the- Morning. Howdy. The Forest Service and Cottonwood Canyons Foundation uh, went to work on building this by hand. So this is a really nicely done section here. Was this built professionally or volunteers or, or what? It depends on the terrain a lot. You know, if you can sick volunteers on a task of cutting through relatively easy trail construction zone, you know, they can do that well. But boy, when you get into rocky areas yeah. or when you get into areas where there's a lot of, say, gamble oak mm -hmm. growing, and you need to cut, and you need to take them out by the roots. It is so hard. It is like if you can get a mini excavator in there, they can just like 
pull out a gamble oak tree roots and all yeah in you know a matter of a couple of minutes at most right versus you can have four volunteers working on trying to get out one piece of gamble oak and it might take two hours of a lot of sweat and <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's pretty difficult we just need all, a lot more money you just yeah you just <laughs> need more money but you know tra trail crews are not totally inexpensive either right because that's uh, roughly four thousand dollars a week and if you're gonna take three years that turns into a bunch of money also so I'd rather see it done faster and uh, with a better end product Howdy. but most of this like this section I probably personally dug out about a hundred feet of this section along here <laughs> and In this uh, area right here yeah uh, along with the Cottonwood Canyons Foundation crew well it's good to kind of have a section of trail you can call your own yeah and you go I remember digging on this section we'll put your plaque up here oh gosh <laughs> yeah. well so which way do we go here I think we're kind of at the end of the BST here aren't we well, yes, exactly. Right here in front of us going down is technically called the Z Trail. It's an old mining road. Okay. And it cuts down to the trailhead on Thousand Oaks Drive. Okay. Now going up here, it goes up for a few hundred feet. There's a little uh, old, there's a spring where there used to be an old mine cave coming out. And uh, it basically ends there. And this is all owned by Salt Lake County, this parcel okay. through here. Then beyond there is private property to connect over into Neff's Canyon. So, and, and, and you've been working on that, but that's kind of on hold for now. Yeah, we worked on that for a future. long time. And uh, unfortunately the land deal to buy private property to connect into the Neff's Canyon trailhead, the, the deal fell through. Uh, it was a disappointment because Neff's Canyon has a, a real Good nice trailhead. forest service trailhead. So. Maybe someday we'll get that, but that's not happening quickly. So then past Neff's Canyon, what, what's the plan here? Then from Neff's Canyon, it would go across that hillside and there's private property up to some of the big rock outcrops you can see, but then it's National Forest Service land and wilderness area. And the trail would cross over from Neff's Canyon and loop around and down into Mill Creek Canyon but that might be the toughest section for construction of the whole Bonneville Shoreline Trail alignment. It is really steep and cliffy and a lot of loose talus. Wow. So that's not going to come easy. So that's not super high on my priority list <laughs> right now. You've done a huge amount of work here. It's, it's so nice, so thank you so much. Ah, oh, my, my pleasure. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, How much longer do you think passion. you're gonna be able to do it? Uh, is, just up until you're ready to take it over. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so when is that? <laughs> that is like some huge pieces of granite. Yes, there. yeah, exactly. That looks like it came off the conference center. Yeah. Right? Yes, yeah, exactly. I guess there's some houses up here that probably used some of it. Yeah, I don't know what the, it's always been there as long as I've been around here. Well, this sure is convenient. We get to end right here at your house. Yeah, right here. It's kind of nice being along the alignment of the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. It's, Part of how I got involved in the Bonneville Shoreline Trail Committee was working on the trail right up across Mount Olympus here. Well, you built a you built a very nice section. It's this has been a beautiful walk, and you've done a lot of good work here, and continuing to do a lot of work all along here, especially in Salt Lake County. But we have a lot to do. Yes, lots more to go, but, but we keep plugging away a mile progress. at a time. Yeah. Well. So yeah, it's been a thank pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. We will keep talking to you as we as we move along. So. All right. Very good. Hey, have a great day, Brandon. John. All right. We'll see you.